And along with the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Foundation, I want to welcome you into my company of friends. Come on in. Hello, Dr. Ron Hurst. How are you? I'm well, Vanessa. How are you today? I want to thank you for joining me because you know what a lot of people don't know, you are actually my personal doctor. Yes, I am. You were with me in my journey. Yeah, it was a journey, wasn't it? It was a journey from the very beginning till what well, recently I just saw you about a month yeah, ago. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Because I used to see you twice a year, now I see you once, once a year. Once a year, because you graduated. I graduated. You did. Ron, I, I don't know if I ever took the time to thank you though, because you made my process so much more easier. I felt so much at peace and I just knew I was going to be well taken care of but what I really appreciated and respected was you were so thorough you know as you are you're so thorough and I remember you said ah some doctors they may be good with this margin you know with the, the results of my uh, uh, my uh, what was it called my love pectomy. love pectomy correct you said some doctors may be okay with that you said but I'm not so you kind of took the step above and beyond so let me say thank you for that well, you know, Vanessa, you're very welcome. And you know, you're a good friend of mine and you're an awesome person. But more importantly, I tell patients when they have the cancer that it goes beyond just the cancer. It's the person that's involved with the cancer and then all the other people that are involved with the cancer. So it's important to incorporate all of that aspect to give them some peace and comfort when dealing with this diagnosis of cancer. I wanted to be a cardiologist. <laughs> okay. Changed my direction. Okay. And then I evolved into wanting to do colorectal and it just wasn't enough cancer-related disease processes. It was something about cancer that allowed me to be a little bit closer to my patient. Doing surgery, it's kind of, it's invasive, it's kind of something that can be impersonal, but cancer allowed me to be personal. And I wanted that aspect of my personal personality, that I knew who I was, that can integrate into my practice of medicine. So when I got into medicine and surgery, I went to oncology, and then one day, I was sitting in the breast clinic while in my residency, mm. and I saw that whole wall lined with about 80 women, and nobody had the desire to want to go to that clinic. They want to push it off on everyone else. And I said, why? They're patients, they're women of color, and they have potential risk of cancer. That was the impetus that made me go that path of breast management. And here I am today. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among black women. We are more likely to be diagnosed younger, at later stages, and with more aggressive forms of the disease, which limits our treatment options. Wow, that's really great because there's something about the women that you just had, a, you cared about. Mm -hmm. I guess cancer, as a doctor, it made you care more about people. Right. Like you said it made you closer. It does, because when you operate for a gallbladder or take off a lump, you cut them, you leave them, you go. Doctors don't care. But when you're sitting there with the patient who has a diagnosis of cancer, you have to leave a little bit of yourself. Now, you know my wife, Tracy, and I you're tell right. her every day. I said, what's important about- Who's a nurse, people need to know. She's, She's a nurse. A nurse. Mm -hmm. nurse. I said, I have to leave a little bit about of myself with them. They have to know that it goes beyond just being a surgeon. I said, it's an honor to be a doctor, but it's a privilege to be a surgeon. Wow. Because you have a choice. Well, I remember something very vividly, a lesson that you taught me that I've shared with a lot of people. As you will recall, when, when Tony and I came to you with our, with my x-rays, right. and you looked immediately, you said, oh, you're going to have to have a vasectomy. And I said, oh, no, mm -hmm. not my breast. And you, you stopped, right. I remember. Yes. And you said, okay, well, we'll try a lumpectomy route. Mm -hmm. But what I learned from you is don't question people who do this every day, whatever it is that they do. Right. And you took me through some steps, which you knew right. was going to be the end result. Right. But why did you do that? Do you want me to feel comfortable with I, it? I did. I mm -hmm. wanted to feel comfortable with it. Plus, I knew you trusted me. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we would get to this point. And I said, listen, we'll give it a try, Vanessa. But here are those little calcifications out here. This particular disease process lends itself to being I use special term, it's, it can be spread in a lot of different areas. And we can't see it microscopically mm -hmm. until we take it out. And I said, let's just let the pathology determine it. So I took it out of my hands and let the objective data tell us what you to do. You let this fool see for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it, but I knew you would come to terms. The campaign is called Know Your Girls because it can be life-saving to know your girls, your breasts, as intimately and as deeply as you know the girls in your life. The women who love you, who support you, celebrate you, the women who hold you up through it all. Your moms, 
aunties, your sisters, your best friends, your sorors, and your daughters. Yeah. And it was worth I just needed time, you, you know. Did. It's a I just lot. needed time to digest that I was gonna have a part of me cut off. That's right. And, because you when know. you came into when you came to see me that day, me telling you you have to have a complete breast removal or mastectomy, you weren't ready for that. Right. You were like, no. Right. I don't want that. I said, okay, don't worry. And I explained it and Tony was there and I showed the pictures and he said, Ron, do I really have to have a mastectomy? I said, we can try. Yeah, you did. You didn't promise me anything. Right, I didn't. I said, we can try. Yeah. But what I appreciate was that when it came to the actual decision, you were okay with it. But by that time, I had time to digest. Right. Between you, and this is something I like to share with women too, when Tony looked at me mm -hmm. and my sister, the mm -hmm. day that we, it was very obvious, remember right. that day? Yeah, I do. It was very obvious that uh, yeah. after a certain treatment didn't work, Correct. I was going to have to have the mastectomy. Correct. Uh, when Tony looked at me and he says, Vanessa, it's just a breast. Mm -hmm. I don't care. He said, we have weddings and graduations. Right. And my sister was like, it's a breast, let it go. Right. And I remember I was crying and I was upset. Mm -hmm. But hearing them two looking into both of their eyes, mm -hmm. I stopped crying immediately. Mm -hmm. And I brain clicked over to, you know, a defense mechanism of survival and mm -hmm. said, let's do it. What we're going to do. You elaborate on a very important point in that cancer does not begin and end with the patient. Is so much involved with the extended family that can have an impact on any direction, good or bad. And having that great family support that you've had makes your journey that much easier. Well, Ron, I want to thank you for joining me today, my company of friends. Oh, you're welcome. And we're going to have a great discussion with some beautiful women that I have assembled here for the Know Your Girls campaign. You know, know your girls, know right? Your girls. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and on behalf of the Ad Council, Susan G. Komen, we thank you for joining this conversation, this much needed conversation, which is going to be so important. And we hope that we'll save so many more lives. Awesome. So thank you for coming. Thank you. My pleasure. In the company